not reported properly in GDP. So they're talking, I mean, if this Fed really wants to raise rates, they've even had the IMF come out and publicly lobby them not to. So you know that, that they, they really want to get the interest rates off the ground here. Uh, but they do note in the in the minutes that Greece was a concern, and it seems like both the IMF and the Fed at least had some communication where they were talking about the possibility of the Greeks not paying the IMF, which in, indeed did happen. So I think you're looking at September still on the table. I don't think this Fed wants to be dissuaded very much from getting interest rate policy normalized because they need it, because if we have another crisis, they need to have some horsepower and some firepower to be able to help out if they need to. So. I think, it, I think it's in the cards for September. There was at least one member of the, of the open market committee that advocated a raise in June. I think he's sitting just down the street from me here in Richmond and uh, several others on the committee who thought it I was can't, a good idea to look at Jamie, up. I cannot believe you're saying it's in the cards for September. We had, yeah. a, but, you know, we had John Lonsky of Moody's yesterday saying there is no way. There, there is a possibly a very big bubble forming in the high yield bond market. A lot of people went in there for yield because, of course, there are a lot of dividends in that business, but there is certainly risk. He said, you're starting to see a few defaults here and there. It's about 2%. The minute it hits 3.8% or 4%, you will not see the Fed move. Warren Buffett has said you won't see the Fed move in 2016. Christine Lagarde has requested that the Fed not move until 2016. Well, like I said, it's on the table. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. But I believe that there is fundamental strength in the U.S. economy, and I don't think that's going to go away, even with Greece or maybe with China. I think we're, it's yet unknown how that affects our economy. It's much bigger. It's much broader. We have export-import issues, yeah. real estate issues that could feed through. But I'm just saying if everything sort of smooths out in the coming weeks, yeah. I still think that the Fed could raise rates. I don't think it's going to derail our economy because we still have a good job market. We have good housing market. We have, you know, household spending. I mean, I can see it in our in our customer base where people are spending differently than they did a couple of years ago. So I think on the ground it's much much different in the United States than it is around the world. So I think they recognize that. And the data that we see in GDP and elsewhere may not be exactly accurate. Okay. We've got about 14 minutes before the close of the market. And we're, we do have some action here with the traders. Uh, can we go this way? I see Teddy. Teddy? Teddy. Yes. Thank you. I know, are you losing money by, by stepping out and talking to us? Never. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's got to make his trade. <laughs> You've been down here how many years? Forty-six. Forty-six. Yes. How does today rank? <laughs> I mean, other than the computer glitch, which has happened before and will happen again. I heard some traders say we're speechless because no. we felt that they were left in the dark. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> There's, we have redundancy at Seaport, but there's redundancy all over the street. This is one of 50 plus venues. Nobody, none of the investors that I'm aware of were negatively impacted. People could get things done. Yes, it's an embarrassment, but it happens, you know, it's happened before and certainly it will happen again. This is the world that we're forced to live in when it comes to trading and things break. And Why do you think? that this will be the headline tomorrow on many a newspaper across the nation. Uh, I don't know why, because I would thought... You're a star to some people. They find you guys pretty well, darn fascinating. Well, <laughs> but you know, United Airlines was shut down completely today. That's a problem, because if you wanted to go to some place with United Airlines, you were negatively impacted. You were not negatively impacted if you wanted to trade stocks today, because this venue was shut down for two hours. There's a huge difference. I don't think there were any investors at risk. I mean, the market acts terrible, not because of this shutdown. The market acts terrible because Greece is a continual mess. China is a mess. The Federal Reserve is a mess. I mean, we can go on and on and on about all the problems. Did you have any clients who wanted to come in and buy at these depressed levels? Ah, uh, well, now that's an entirely different story. Uh, the answer is yes, but I think, quite frankly, because how how critical, more so now than in the past, Greece is. Most people are just on the sidelines, and they're simply going to wait to the dust settle. Because trying to catch a falling knife in a down market, as you and I both know, can be very painful and very dangerous. And you know what? That was the oil market. We cannot ignore what happened with the oil market. Eric Bowling told us yesterday, even though it looks like it's cheap, it may go cheaper tomorrow, which is today. And sure enough, oil moving lower once again, because we got much bigger than expected bills in inventory. Well, yeah. it's, it's, one of the negative things about electronic markets is that momentum takes over. And, and when it's negative, it's very painful. When it's positive, of course, we're all smiling. And 
But one of the good things about electronic markets was, in fact, today, the stock exchange had a glitch, but trading continued. Right. And that would not have happened five years ago, though with physical trading, we never would have been shut down anyway. Yep, yeah. and did you remember that Alcoa is reporting after the bell? <laughs> really? We're back at the earnings? Yeah. Thank you for reminding us. Thank you. Many, many years down here. In fact, let's go back to Adam Shapiro. Adam, can you hear me? Let's, let's hear